Good evening and welcome everyone to Season 3, Episode 12 of Conservation Conversations with BirdLife South Africa. I'm your host, Andrew de Bloch, coming to you live from a very chilly Wackerström. So tonight we have a slightly different setup. I'm in Wackerström, Melissa's in Johannesburg, she's our silent partner this evening. And Daniel Engelbrecht, although he's presenting on Paula Kwane, is joining us from um, Stellenbosch and he's currently sitting in a load shed and dig somewhere i imagine um, so thank you for daniel for pulling through and making a plan last minute with this uh, last announcement and i see and um, there's quite a few of our viewers that aren't able to join us tonight because of load shedding of course i just would like to remind everyone you can catch all of these on our youtube channel and the recording will be up um, tomorrow sometime so if you have friends frantically contacting you saying please please i can't get onto the webinar tonight don't stress too much um, because we will have it up tomorrow to, um, tomorrow on YouTube. So tonight's show is our third in the AV Tourism series on birding in and around South Africa's urban centres. But before we get to that, um, just a reminder to communicate with us using the chat and the Q&A feeds in Zoom, or if you're watching us on Facebook Live tonight, you can use the comment feed there. So please use the hashtag conservation conversations on all major social media channels to let us know what you think of the show. And you can catch up on all of our previous episodes, as I mentioned, by BirdLife South Africa's YouTube channel. And there are now over 90 episodes there for you to enjoy. 90 episodes, folks. We're counting down to number 100. Very, very exciting times for us at the Conservation Conversations. Now, thanks as always for the generous contributions towards our webinars, which help to keep these shows free for everyone to learn and enjoy. And you can visit the Cricket page or EFT BirdLife South, South Africa directly. And if you do do that uh, latter option, you can use the reference webinars and your name. So as most of you will know, we've been running an AV tourism series on conservation conversations this year, focusing on birding in and around South Africa's major cities. We began with the two biggies in Cape Town and Johannesburg, and we'll have Durban presented next month. However, squeezed into the mix between the giants is the generally underrated and underappreciated Polokwane. As our presenter tonight will show, this is actually a fascinating area to go birding as it is the meeting point of the distributions of some of South Africa's arid western species and tropical eastern species. So certainly a very interesting area to go and visit. And talking us through this area is uh, none other than Daniel Engelbrecht. Um, some of you might uh, notice that Daniel's CV is somewhat shorter than some of the illustrious guests that we've had on our show so far. Um, but this is not to say at all that Daniel is not deserving of a spot here. And in fact, Daniel is setting a new record for the youngest ever presenter on Conservation Conversations. Daniel is just 19. He is the progeny of um, the very well-known Professor Derek Engelbrecht, um, who is based at the University of Limpopo and will be familiar to many, many um, of you out there. Um, Daniel is an excellent bird in his own right. Um, he's been mentored, of course, by his dad, but as, as well as others like the late Joe Grossel, um, and he has been birding in Polokwane for as long as he can remember. Um, I actually did a trip with Daniel, I think it was last year, Dan, where we went out to Polokwane and over to Letzitele, and um, he netted me no fewer than five lifers showing me around this area, and I was just absolutely blown away um, by this young man's um, birding skills. Uh, I was there with him and a other, another up-and-coming young birder, Josh Olszewski, and I tell you, the, the conversations around the campfire at night were um, just riveting. I mean, I sat there and just listened um, to these two youngsters talk about birds across South Africa, across Southern Africa, and even species that they, they hadn't even encountered on their own, but um, they knew so much about South, Southern American birds and, and all the rest. So a more passionate birder, I think, you will not find than Daniel. And as I mentioned, it's a bit of a different setup tonight. Daniel had the unfortunate news today that he's got load shedding from six until eight um, he's now based down in Stellenbosch where he's studying towards his environmental degree or his um, BSc um, and uh, he's still joining us but um, he's going to be just joining us shortly to say a few words before he starts and then we will get on with showing his pre-recorded presentation which he put together for us last minute today so Daniel thank you so much for joining us I'm very excited to uh, watch through your presentation and um, if you'd like to share a couple of words and say um, hello and good evening to everyone tonight i'm sure they'd appreciate it if you if you are with us there cool um yeah thanks a lot Andy. thank you very much for 
for the for the kind words. Um, I hope I can live up to to, to some of those um, expectations tonight. Um, yeah, so as as Andy says, um, I, I'm born and bred in in Polokwane, so I've been birding this area for my whole life. Um, birding is obviously a, a very big passion of mine, and um, yeah, I hope to share with you guys today some of these fantastic sites that we have on offer between Polokwane and Let's Tele. And um, yeah, please please do stand till the end. Uh, enjoy the presentation, and yeah, at the end we'll have a questions and answer section. So please feel free to to ask me whatever questions you have afterwards. Thank you. Thanks so much, Daniel, especially under the circumstances, making a plan to uh, get your presentation to us and to join us tonight. As Dan mentioned, he's going to be around for questions and answers afterwards. I think he's going to drop off shortly just to save some battery power and then he'll he'll join us in 45 minutes once his presentation is over. Um, so thank you very much to Daniel for, for putting it all together and then we'll, we'll be away with our presentation tonight on birding in Polokwane Letsitele area. Very good evening, folks, and a very warm welcome to where East meets West, birding the, the legendary Polokwane to Let's Tell area. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel Engelbrecht, and I grew up in Polokwane. So this is a, an area very dear to my heart. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my experiences of, of years of birding this, what can be sometimes an overwhelming area. So I, I do hope to provide you guys with some some local tips. We'll be going through some of the classical sites for some of the special species. And I hope to introduce you to some of the, the newer sites, some of our, our local secrets. Um, so sit back and enjoy this, this virtual tour. And yeah, I hope to inspire you to, to perhaps take a trip up this way. Um, so to get stuck into it, to make sure we're all on the same page, we are referring to this area right in the northeastern part of South Africa along the, the northern escarpment here. So I've divided this area, as we'll see now, into three main sections, and then I've selected some of the key sites from there. So we'll be looking at where to find the specials, um, all the species on offer, and basically how to go about planning, say, a birding weekend in this area. So what makes this area so special? Well, it's undeniably the center of avian diversity in South Africa. Um, put simply, there's more species here than there are anywhere else in the country, um, and I would argue in, in the whole Southern African subregion as well. I've seen well over 500 species along this route. And I mean, it just, it just, if you're a South African birder, this area is a must visit. Uh, there's a number of species here that are very difficult to find outside this area. And of course, if you're interested in, in getting a big list, um, this would certainly be a place that you would want to include. Another great factor about this is it's ease of access. So the most westerly site I'm going to talk about here, Chebeng, is only 140, 140 kilometers, excuse me, from the most easterly site. So we've got a larger number of areas, a large number of species in a small area. So you can do this over a weekend and you can see over 300 species over a weekend in summer, for example. Um, so it's a small area, large number of species, which obviously contributes to the attraction. Um, there's a large diversity of habitats, so there's also a large altitudinal range. We go all the way from 2,000 meters up on Iron Crown and the Volkberg down to 300 meters in Let's Tele. And this brings with it, obviously, many habitats from Afro-Montane forest to plateau bushveld to mixed woodlands. And obviously, in turn, the birds that associate with this habitat occur there, um, increasing, obviously, the number of, of species there. The proximity to cities is obviously um, a major factor as well. Uh, it's only about, this whole area is only about three hours drive from Johannesburg. So it's doable as a weekend trip from Gauteng. And it's not some way of sight. It's not as if you're driving up into the Limpopo River Valley, um, where you're far away from everything. You've got Polokwane and Zanin, two cities right along our route, as we'll see. And as a result of that, there's a wide range of accommodation available. You never struggle to find accommodation anywhere here. There's some really excellent places to stay, especially in the Kloof. Um, so accommodation is definitely an issue. So you can do this very comfortably. Um, and obviously, no matter what your budget is, you can make it suit your budget as well. And just to, just to include what, what makes it so special, I've included a photo of one of the standout species, um, African skimmer here in the background, a uh, species that, say 10 years ago in South Africa was almost unheard of and now one that we regularly target in, in the low fall. So um, as, as if we needed any more motivation to come, um, there's a, a, an excellent photo of an, of, of an African skimmer there. So this is the area in question. And as I, I mentioned, we're going to divide it into three 
um, subsections. So in the West, um, okay, the years the two cities, Polokwane and Zinin. In the West, we have the Polokwane Plateau. So um, this is characterized by your Acacia Fault Savannah, Plateau Bush Fault. Um, in the middle, we've got the Northern Escarpment, uh, forests, montane grassland. And then on the Eastern side, we have the Low Fault, which is personally my favorite section out of these three. Um, we'll get into that later, um, but some really fantastic species. And I think many of you will be surprised to hear the, the caliber of birding on offer in this section of the low fault. So what we're going to do is I've selected three sites from each of these three areas. So let's get stuck in immediately. So the, the, the Polokwane Plateau is going to be the first area we're going to talk about. We're going to work west and then further east. And I've taken three of my favorite birding sites from here. So first of all, the Chibeng grasslands. This is quite a Quite an unexplored site. Um, I don't think too many birders know about it. Um, it's sort of a, a local gem for the for the Polokwane Plateau birders. Um, and it's got some great birds, some species that are not on offer anywhere else in the Pobo province. And it's also the best site to see a number of species um, around Polokwane. For example, white-bellied bustards, melodious larks, species that we don't associate with other parts of, of, of the province, really. Then I've gone all the way to the east, um, and I've taken the Sebuyang wetlands. Also, quite an quite an unknown site. Not too many birders know about it. A great place for many of the summer migrant water birds um, and and, and relids. And then I've selected the the old classic, the the, the Polokwane game reserve. Also, my my local patch. Um, and we're going to go through some of the some of some of the sites there and some of the amazing birds on offer in the Polokwane game reserve. Right, so this is the Chibeng grasslands. This is what it looks like. Overgrazed, very short grassland, a um, couple of scattered trees. And yeah, basically this is known locally um, by the birders as Larkville. We, we can see over 10 species of larks here. To be precise, there's, there's been 11 species recorded here. And yeah, some, some, so some really excellent birds, as I mentioned before, that are quite difficult in other parts of the province um, and some really top class birds. So I've taken the, some inspiration from the, 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 the webinar on birding Cape Town. I really enjoyed that, that format. So I've, I've sort of adapted it to my presentation here. And as you can see, Chibing is an is easy city I can drive from Polokwane. I, I recommend getting there in the morning. You spend the morning birding there. It's not on a reserve though. It's sort of all open land. Um, it's, it's, it's all public land. Um, you, you, you are going to be driving through through villages and getting out of your car and then birding in these areas. It is safe. I've never had any issues there. I don't know anyone that's had any issues there. I've never felt unsafe there, but I mean, it's, it's, it is, it is South Africa. Keep an eye open, be, be, be vigilant when you're outside. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you spent the morning bird in this area, a hundred species would be a reasonable target to, to aim towards. Some of the, the specials on offer include short lark, uh, pink bulb melodious, Tinking cisticola, white bellied bustards, yellow bellied eremomola, and but yeah, we'll get into all those species now. So this is basically what the birding at Chibing is like. You get out of your car and you walk around, and um, this is obviously in summer. You can see the grass is quite a bit longer. In winter, it turns into a much more arid setting. And here we have one of the standout species immediately, short clawed lark. So this is arguably one of the best sites for them. This bird is really easy around Chibing. Um, they are abundant here they love this overgrazed habitat um yeah easy to pick up on call so i suggest you familiarize yourself it's got a similar call to all the other long bird like species um get there the males are normally displaying during the right times of the year and even even in winter these birds are are, are not difficult to track down around around Chibeng. and what's always nice about birding villages is the birds are quite used to people birds are quite habituated so you can get really excellent views of short larks here so um, as you can see here, um, this bird calling its calling its heart away um, at Chibeng. Spike hill lark is another is, a, is, a, is another real special of the area. Um, slightly more difficult than short cord lark to to track down. They they tend to be a, a bit more tricky. Um, they're not as common. Um, but again, it's a bird that we do bump into here quite often. They sort of move around in small family groups, and again, a very a very very distinctive call as well. So, I'm um, a species to look out for. Thinking cisticola, another really good bird. So for this, you would want to focus more on the slightly more shrubby areas. Um, usually, as you'll see, the small hills and things around Chibeng, they're normally closer to the, to the higher points where there's a bit more shrub. Um, again, an easy bird to pick up, really distinctive call. And then we have these two 
stunning Kalahari scrub robins down here, um, a species that you would be very surprised to leave to bang without seeing. Um, they are abundant there. And yeah, also very, very photogenic birds um, around Chebeng. Greyback Sparrowlock is another standout species of this area, um, a bird that was for a very long time a, a tough bird in the Lapopo province and one that we now pick up regularly around Chebeng. They're quite easy to flush from the road. And if you see a Sparrowlock, it will in all likelihood be um, Greyback Sparrowlocks. Chestnut back is, is, is very uncommon in the area. So keep an eye open for greyback sparrowlocks. Yellowberry eremomula, another very cute species. Um, again, more around the, the more shrubby areas. Can be quite a difficult bird to pick up around the Polokwane Plateau um, unless you work in the right areas, but Chebeng is a really good site to, to try for the species. So just to give us a bit of an overview of where to bird at Chebeng, so you can see there's a number of public access roads around here. I've highlighted them in red for us. And so some of the sites you want to focus on, there's a little seasonal wetland down here um, near the, the village of Falkop. Uh, we pick up long-tailed widow birds there. There's marshals there. Um, Tigling cesticulars are around this area. And then we have Hotel Feed Dam. If you're in the mood to, to try your luck at some rarity finding, Hotel Feed is uh, the the spot to try your luck. Um, we've picked up over the years, there's been records of American Golden Plover, Pectoral Sandpipe on a few occasions, Bridal Turn last year. So if you're in the mood for trying for rarities, Hope to Feed is, is a good spot. It's one of the only large water bodies in the area. So if something rare is going to show up, it's going to show up at, at Hope to Feed. So it's always worth a shop and it's easy to combine with this. It's literally not even 10 minutes drive from these sites at Chebeng. And then we've got this main grassland area where all the birds are these cloud cesticulars here. Uh, we pick up melodious lark here sometimes, uh, short cord lark, pink bulb lark, white bellied bustards. They're all in this main grassland area. So, again, as I mentioned earlier, you drive around, you get out of your car, and then you just sort of work these areas. Right. Next, we're moving on to the, the classic Polokwane site, the, the, the Polokwane game reserve. So, the area has gone has undergone quite a habitat transformation over, over the past decade. Um, it's become much more wooded. So, we're sort of losing um, a number of the, the more sparse acacia filed birds. So shortcut larks are becoming increasingly difficult to find in the reserve itself. Nonetheless, we're going to go through spots where they still are to show you guys where to find them. But this change in habitat brings with it a number of new species, um, as, we'll, as we'll see now. So the great thing about the reserve is it's literally four minutes from Polokwane. Um, very easy to access. Um, as you can see, literally, as I said, four minutes drive. I mean, there's, there's really no excuse. If you're in the Polokwane area, this is a must do. Um, you can see a good number of species here in summer. Um, on a morning outing, 120 species is, is really quite, um, quite an easy target. And as you can see, yeah, a number of really good special species on off here. Shaw Codlock, Chili's Franklin, um, and we'll get into all of those species now. It's great for all of your acacia fall specials. Um, this obviously being one of the standout species, Crimson Breasted Strike, an absolutely spectacular bird and one that is very regular in the Polokwane Game Reserve. Um, this is not a difficult bird by any stretch of the imagination. And I mean, what a stunner it is. Shaft tail wider, slightly more challenging species, um, but them along with the other Viduids are, are certainly present in the summer months. You can see these males with their beautiful plumes um, throughout most of the reserve. And then, as I mentioned, it's become more wooded over the years. So we're starting to pick up birds such as this bronzing corsa more regularly. This was a species that never used to occur there, and yet it's now one that I see relatively often in the summer months. Um, your best bet to find this bird will be to drive basically any of the main loop roads um, as the sun sets. And yeah, often really approachable species as well. You can really get nice views of these birds. Um, and yeah, quite a quite a special species. Then the whole Polokwane Plateau um, is great for your Paleotic Migrant Warblers, um, Ictrine Warbler being one of my favorites and one of the slightly tougher warblers, but it's a bird that we do see in the Polokwane Game Reserve. Um, as with all of the warblers, I do suggest familiarizing yourself with the calls. Um, it does take a bit of skill and practice to pick out individual warbler species on call, but Ictrine has got a relatively distinct um, contact call, and it's one that we can definitely target in the Polokwane Game Reserve. As you can see, quite an attractive warbler, and it's often, well, sticking with the theme of the Hippolytus warblers, we have olive tree warbler here, um, one of the very large warbler, and yeah, easily picked up by this like loud grating call. And they are really common during the summer months in the Polokwane Game Reserve. There's a couple of sites where these birds are quite reliable. 
And yeah, really, really special for, for, for most of the warblers, actually. Um, the majority of the Paleoarctic migrant warblers are, are quite targetable in the Polar Pony Game Reserve. Green Sandpiper has become a bird that is also one that we, <laughs> that we sort of go into the reserve to see now. Um, this particular individual has been returning um, successfully for a number of years now. Um, and it's normally at one or the other dam. So there's literally two dams where this bird is. If it's not at the one, it's normally at the other dam. And they're both very small dams. So you can get um, great views of this bird from, from your car. And yeah, a species that if you need green sandpiper, Poloquani Game Reserve from October to sort of mid-summer is, is, is actually quite reliable. Chili's Franklin, what a stunning bird. Um, very tough to see this well. Occasionally luck is on your side and you do track these birds down, um, sort of walking across the road. But otherwise, it's a bird that requires quite a bit of graft and patience to find. Um, obviously, the call is very distinctive. And these are mainly around the sort of more rocky outcrops uh, towards the back of the reserve. But we'll get into those sites shortly. Bushel Pippet is a very regular species. This is not a bird that you struggle to see in the Polokwane Game Reserve. Um, regularly flush them driving around. Um, again, I suggest you familiarize yourself with the call. They've got this distinctive sort of electric call that they give away as they take off from the side of the road. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's not a difficult bird. It's, it's actually probably my most reliable site for, for this particular species. And then of course, the, the legend of the Polokwane Plateau Shawcod Lark, as I mentioned, they've, they've become slightly more difficult in the Polokwane Game Reserve itself. Chebeng is a better bet. Um, but there are sites, as we'll get into them now, um, where these birds are. Giving us a quick site overview, uh, the Alleridge Dam is here. So basically, as you drive in, the, the entrance is up here. And this is sort of the main road loop. Alleridge Dam is one of your first spots. Great for Australian adventures in the winter. You can get these excellent views of many violeted wax balls and black-faced wax balls, pytilias, etc., coming down to drink. And during the summer months, it's a great spot for the warblers. Um, Olive tree warbler, for example, is really regular around this dam and green sandpiper. So the green sandpiper is normally either there or yeah, at some of the dams here in this sort of woodland section. There's a central plains area here where there's a couple of pairs of shortcut locks. So if you need that, um, it's, it's, it's a good idea to, to look through there. I, I pick up bronzing courses along this road quite regularly as well. And then there's this acacia woodland section here where one of the good species here is a, um, a vambo sparrow. So really quite a, Quite a tough species to pick up um, and one that I should have included in, in, in the specials, but they are here. So I bump into them relatively often. And in addition to that, things like bearded woodpecker and a couple of the more woodlandy species are, are found in this area. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the dams in here are also a good space, a good place to check out for, for the green sandpiper. Uh, there's some granite outcrops in the back of the reserve, where, as I mentioned earlier, Shelley's Franklin and Koki Franklin are, are relatively easy to get. And then we've got these southeastern plains, in particular good for uh, shortcut larks. There's tingling cysticulas here some years, but they're also very variable um, in, in the reserve. Um, they, they, they're there some years and they're gone for a few years. There's Secretary Bird here as well. So all in all, um, a great place to check out. And then we move on to sort of sticking with the theme of um, Chabeng, where it was a slightly unexplored site. We're moving on to Sebiyeng and the Makotopong wetlands, also quite a, a poorly known area outside the, the local Polokwane birding circles. So it's basically a large wetland system. There's a couple of uh, man-made dams and then some, some seasonal floodplains. And it's really great for water birds and warblers in particular. So... Makatupong and Sebiyeng, it's both about half an hour's drive east of Polokwane. Um, ideally, you only need to spend the morning here. Um, it gets quite hot during the summer months uh, when you want to be there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's very similar to Chibeng in terms of the birding. It's all on public land. So again, be, be, be vigilant in some of the areas. And as you can see, these are some of the, the, the special species on offer. Flush Nightingale being obviously one of the the main targets, in addition to a number of the other migrant warblers. And yeah, also shortcut lock, again, um, a species that is that is quite easily seen um, at Makatupong. So here's a little photo of the habitat at Makatupong. You can see it sort of floods and creates this massive um, seasonal floodplain. Um, and normally just by walking along the edge of this wetland, you you end up inevitably flushing crakes and dwarf bitterns, uh, lesser murrens, and some of these, some of the species. So 
here we have one of our, our, our birds in question, dwarf bitten. Um, this is this is probably my most reliable site for them. Um, dwarf bitten's are really a regular species here. They, they return here every single summer and normally in quite large numbers. Um, it's quite possible during the right times of the year, obviously in summer, to see dozens of these birds um, at, at Makutupong. Uh, Lesson we're in also another one of our breeding intra Africa migrants. Um, quite tough to see this while. Uh, they, they tend to be a bit more secretive and normally they only offer a sort of fleeting glimpse as they, as they fly away or swim into the thicker vegetation. But given a bit of patience, it's possible to get nice views of Lesson Wurrens and Magatapong, again, a species that returns there every single year. Uh, great for, in general, just other water birds, African jacana, for example. Uh, Fulvus whistling duck, a tough bird in the popo, quite easy to see here. Greater painted snipes, they, they can be a bit hit and miss. Some years they are very common at Makatapong and you, and you see them regularly, and other years they can be a bit tougher to find. But uh, it's normally quite a, quite a safe bet around Makatapong and Sebeying. And then first nightingale, um, obviously quite a, quite a legendary bird, um, known to be a, a super skulker, as it's described in, in some field guides. And yeah, a notoriously secretive bird. You need to familiarize yourself with the call and be prepared to commit a, a lot of time to just trying to get views of this bird. Um, to get views such as in this photo is, is very rare. It's normally this little brown bird sort of hopping around in the back of a bush. But as I've mentioned, given a bit of patience, you can really get nice views of these birds. Um, so just a bit of a site overview, just to show you how to get to Market Pong. You drive the R81 and you turn right if you're coming from the Pulukwane side now um, at the sign that is Market Pong. And then it can be slightly tricky to get down to the floodplain itself, but you, you drive into the village and you turn left once you pass the little soccer stadium. And then you sort of work your way down to the to the floodplain here. Some of the sites, so we've got this, the area in the village is actually a very good site for shortcode lock. And you get really fantastic views of these birds. These birds are extremely tame and, um, and, and approachable. So if you're looking for a, a very undignified shortcode lock tick, um, market form would be a very good place to go for that. Uh, there's a, the central plains area here. Great for a number of sea eaters, pick up radio adventures, taming courses there occasionally. Um, white bellied bustards, and of course, shortcut larks again. Um, they, they are all over this area. Again, um, as I mentioned, at Chebe, at, same as at Chebeng, you get really good views of the birds here. There's a, a dam here, great for waterfowl. Also, green sandpipe has been recorded there. So, always worth checking through any waders in that area. And then, obviously, the main attraction here is this big floodplain. Um, what I generally find works best is if you park your car here. And just walk along the edge of the floodplain here. You can normally pick up all of the, the special species. Then Sebiyeng is a short 18-minute drive back through Makutupong and along this, this nice dirt road um, to Sebiyeng. It's this large dam here. There's a, a, a little bee eater colony here. Um, so if you're interested in photography, it's worth checking that out. There's some thicket sections along the space. And actually, one of the interesting birds on off here is gorgeous bushwhack. So you're in this really dry, overgrazed um, acacia scrub. And then all of a sudden there's a slightly thicker area and <laughs> there's actually gorgeous bush rocks there. So um, if you're looking at finding gorgeous bush rock and getting views of them, um, it's worth working these, these thicket areas around Sibiyeng. And of course the golden rule at Sibiyeng, um, most Polokwane birders know this, you, you scan through the heron roost first because there is a rufous bed in heron in, in the system here. Um, it's seen on the odd occasion, and it's normally quite, it's normally the safe bet would be to look through the heron roost first. So get there, look through the heron roost, see if the rufous bed heron's there, and if you're lucky, you might be rewarded with some views of that. There's this shallower section in the blue where we pick up mostly waders, and then this green area here, there's some really nice tickets for warblers, in particular thrush nightingale, there's marsh warblers there, and also, there's potential for river wobbler along this area as well, particularly, particularly towards April um, when they become more vocal. So that's the Polokwane Plateau done. We're now going to move on to the, the northern escarpment, um, also a, a very exciting place to bird. And I've now also lifted three sites out here. Um, one classic site, Woodbush Forest Drive. Um, obviously, I think most birds are familiar with Woodbush. Um, I'm going to go through all the sites, where to find the species. But I mean, Woodbush is, is a very well-known site. Um, obviously, one of the best, if not the best, forest birding area in the whole of South Africa. 
Uh, there's the Heinitzburg Grasslands, where you pick up, as the name suggests, a number of the grassland specials. And then a very unknown and very poorly birded area, the Volkberg Wilderness area, with one very special Paleoarctic migrant on offer, which we'll get into right now. So this is Volkberg. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a protected area. Um, it's very poorly birded. Not too many people come up here and bird. And it's sort of gained a bit of, a bit of popularity over the last few years after the discovery of um, the, the special Paleoarctic migrant, which we're going to get into now. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you've got these grassland areas on, on the peak and then these um, quite wooded valleys um, in the middle. And it creates these insane combinations of species. So a number of these valleys actually connect into the low fault. So you get really strange combinations of birds. For example, you get red wing Franklins up here and then literally 100 meters further down, you're picking up Rex's helmet tracks. So it's this bizarre mix of species and it, it makes for very exciting birding. So it's about an hour's drive from Polokwane and it's equidistant from Zanin as well. It's about an hour's drive. And I mean, you could aim for about 80 species here and some some really great species on offer. Um, as you can see, one of the specials, as I, as I mentioned, the, the the very special Paleoarctic Magnum sheep of it, um, in addition to species such as Gurney Sugarbird, Bastwick Tat, so your real highland species, and then also some of your, your attractive thicket specials, such as gorgeous bushrike, um, strike puppets along the cliffs there. So, yeah, as I mentioned, equidistant from Zanin, and I mean, even if the birding's slow, you've got these excellent vistas everywhere. Um, this is from Iron Crown, so this is the highest point in the Limpopo province, just over 2,000 meters, and as you can see, um, really fantastic views here um, on almost any morning. Right, Gurney Sugarbird. Um, this is one of, the, one of the standout species from here. Um, I always find it surprising. You can be in Polokwane in the morning and then head into the afternoon and be ticking off all these great high fault species. So Gurney Sugarbird, I'm um, obviously very closely associated with proteas. So normally not a difficult bird to find here. You, you drive around until you find a, a flowering stand of proteas and these birds are normally there. Um, Nicholson's puppet, another, another high altitude species in the Lapopo province. Um, really a bird that you can get great views of. They're actually quite approachable. And yeah, a bird that can be a bit tricky to pick up as well. Um, it, it takes a bit of skill. You would, you would need to familiarize yourself with the call. Um, they, these birds are actually quite vocal. And if you in tune with a call, you do pick up Nicholson's puppets relatively easily. Uh, Bowstreet Chat, another one of our, our highland endemics and, um, yeah, a bird that likes these boulder strewn hillsides up there. And then of course, the star of the show here, tree puppet, um, a species that is probably, um, this is probably the most reliable site in, in the country, if not the subregion for the species. Um, they, are, they are very regular in the right spots here, um, mostly in the, the valley areas. And um, yeah, it's possible to flush uh, a, a dozen of these birds in a good morning. So really a standout species and, and a species that is that is putting the Volkberg Wilderness area on the map. A uh, great double colored sunbird, a very attractive uh, resident. Um, yeah, obviously most most commonly around any of the flowering stands there, whaling cisticular, a very regular species around there. Uh, White-throated robin chat, um, another one of the species that we see in the, in the thickets around Volkberg very often. Uh, so just getting into some of the sites, there's an entrance um, at the start of the drive up, up into, into the Vaultberg. Um, there's, it's also a security checkpoint. It's really easy to get through. Just explain to the, to the, to the gate guard that you're interested in doing some birding and he'll be more than happy to, to let you in. Then there's these lower slopes down here. Uh, great for gorgeous bush ride, great to fly catcher. There's mocking cliff chats down there. Um, Southern black tit, so more of your sort of drier mountain bushveld species. And then there's these great valleys where obviously, as I mentioned, you, you target species such as tree puppet. I've seen tree puppet along this road heading up. Um, so yeah, uh, you, you, you really want to be working those, those, those valleys. And then you've got these montane grasslands, it's very much highland um, habitats where we target buff streak chats and um, your protea stands up there so malachite sunbirds gurney sugarbirds etc right the heinitzburg grasslands that'll be our, our second site from the northern escarpment and um again quite an quite an underrated site given its proximity to to heinitzburg 
Um, it is it, it is a relatively well known site, but there's some really great birds here that are, are quite tough to pick up anywhere else um, in the area, and really good birds for South Africa as well. Um, it's about 28 minutes drive from Zanin, and obviously it is right in Hainesburg. So if you're staying in Hainesburg, this is literally on your doorstep. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a number of ways to tackle it. You can bird from, from the road by parking your car and then getting out and tracking down some of the birds, or you can use one of the hiking trails, which is obviously very nice. Um, corncrake, one of the, the good species on offer here is, is most readily flushed, obviously, when you when you walk in on the hiking trails. Um, but yeah, the, all, the, all the other species are, are quite easy to, to track down from, from the road. Uh, I mean, you, you really don't spend too much time there. About an hour and two hours, about an hour to two hours, and you should you should cover most of the special species, such as this, the fantail grassbird. Um, this can be a tough species to, to see at the best of times. Um, they they tend to be quite secretive. Um, and the one of the issues at Heinitzburg is the grass gets burnt relatively often. So if the grass is short, fantail grassbirds are not going to be there. They like these much taller, more well-established grasslands. At the moment, it's really good for them. Um, they are there. So if the grass is looking good, listen out for this bird's call, this very high pitched call. And um, yeah, you can be rewarded with nice views of fantail grass bird. Uh, African yellow warbler, a very regular species around here, um, easy to pick up on, on call as well. And yeah, species that, that tends to show very well as well. Red colored widow bird, um, very regular in the Hainesburg grasslands, uh, species that you that you don't easily miss. Um, obviously, specifically in the summer months when the males are displaying, you've got these beautiful males with these stunning plumes flying around in the grassland. Uh, Cape grassbird, obviously, very regular species around there. Um, some of the some of the seed eaters along the, the road verge, sweet wax balls are, are are very easy to pick up in Hainesburg. So, looking at some of the sites here, um, there's a section of reed beds. As you turn off the R71 onto the R2, uh, R528 uh, or the, the George's Valley Road. And there's Holub's Golden Weaver here, Cape Weaver, Thick Build Weaver. So a couple of couple of your weavers. Uh, the African Rail is quite easy to pick up here. So always worth checking through um, through the, the reed beds. There's a little marsh here, which is also, I included this because it's right next to the side of the road. Uh, very good for African Yellow Warbler. Broad-tailed warblers you pick up mostly in this area. And if you are keen on walking the hiking trail, you park up at the cemetery, you walk down, and then there's this nice hiking trail that covers this whole grassland. Um, you can actually see it on the on the satellite image here. And um, yeah, so that's just a, a quick overview of Hainitzburg. I thought I'd include it. So it's a nice site. Like as I mentioned, species such as broad-tailed warbler are not things that you pick up readily anywhere else in the province. So always worth including Hainitzburg into your trip itinerary. Uh, Cape parrots, for example, are also quite, quite, quite reliable in Hainitzburg. Uh, certain times of the year, the birds actually come and they feed here um, in sort of the, the parts of south of town. Um, so if you're looking for Cape parrots, Hainitzburg can be a good area to target them as well. Um, as is this site, Woodbush Forest Drive. So this is um, one, of the, well, one of the legendary sites, sort of synonymous of birding the Limpopo province and um for very good reason it's it's the best site no the best forest building site in the country in my opinion and I, I think most people would agree um it's about half an hour's drive from zanin a little over an hour's drive from polokwane very safe area to bird um mostly birding from the car um as you drive to the to the forest drive and then i always recommend parking and then walking down um i, I find just as a general tip for forest birding, it's much easier to pick up on these species when you're out of the car. Birding in a forest from the car is, is extremely challenging. So get out, walk around, you, you're much more immersed, you can pick up calls much, much more easily. Um, so yeah, always recommend getting out of your car and then exploring to, to track down these birds. I would take the whole morning, cover this area, and yeah, I think an important thing to remember is forests require patience. Um, you're not going to see all the target species in, in, in one morning here. And um, it's difficult to get satisfying views of the species. So it does require work. Um, sometimes I would say the best approach would be to come in spring. The birds are, are most vocal then. And then to take the weekend and literally just work these forests um, to get satisfying views of, of, of all the species. And obviously the, the setting is so fantastic. It's really an attractive setting. Um, these beautiful massive Afro-Montane forests. So yeah, some of the, the special species in this area, um, this bird needs no introduction at all, Marina Trogan, 
um, easy to track down in spring when they when they when they're very vocal. Um, but yeah, Woodbush is a great spot for for these Narina shoguns. Uh, Cape parrot, um, a very good species, uh, another endemic, obviously, and yeah, a, a bird that we see regularly along the, the right parts of Woodbush Forest Drive. We'll get into those sites now. Uh, this photo wasn't actually taken um, at Woodbush. You can see this bird's feeding on a protea. This was taken at Chanel Corp, which is a bit further along the road um, from Woodbush Forest Drive. Yellow Street Greenbull, um, a very regular species, um, arguably one of the easiest forest birds to see at Woodbush Forest Drive. Orange ground thrush, um, one of my personal favorites, uh, just excellent call. And um, yeah, a species that if you were to get there, particularly in summer, early in the morning, um, they are very vocal. And it's, it's certainly not a difficult species to, to then track down. Um, they can be tough to get views of, though. They, they, they tend to sit quite high up in the trees. Um, and it, it can take a bit of patience to actually pinpoint this bird once you, well, once you have, it, have it calling. And I mean, yeah, obviously one of the real standout species, black funded bushwhack. So this is a bird that that does require patience. Um, sometimes you get there and, they, and they're easy, and most of the times it's 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 a bit of a mission. Um, all credits to Haman Prinsler for capturing this fantastic image of, of a male. Um, yeah, I mean, the best approach for this bird would be to to listen out for the call. They've got this sort of um, screeching call. Um, and yeah, for, for, for familiarize yourself with the call, get there early in the morning and, and then listen out for this bird. Um, I mean, avoid using playback uh, as much as possible. There's lots of birds going to, to these areas. So keep playback to an absolute minimum. Um, you don't need playback to, to track down this bird anyway. Um, yeah, given some patience, you can be rewarded with really fantastic views of, of Black Fun Bushrike. Carlos Robin Chat, uh, another endemic and yeah, one of the one of the more common species in this part of part of the province. And then of course, a, a night drive in Woodbush can actually be very rewarding as well. Um, wood owls are abundant here. There's striped fluff tails at certain areas as well as buff spotted fluff tail. So if you're staying there for a weekend, I do recommend taking a, a night drive, especially if you're keen on getting good views of, of, those, of those species I've mentioned. So to give us a bit of a site overview, um, all these sites are obviously you'll be driving on the R71 and you'll turn off at the, 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 the turn off labeled Hautpostor. And there's this little yellow section that I've highlighted is a section of disturbed vegetation. So it's got a couple of invasive trees there and sort of this, this broken forest. And it's great for a number of species actually. So white starred robin is quite reliable along this section of, of the road. Uh, there's striped fluff tails at some of the wetlands further down here. Um, and it's a, it's a great section to stop over. It's a great warm up before you head into, in, in, into the proper forest. Pick up regular forest species here, such as Cape Bathurst, Blue Mantle Flycatcher, Yellow Street Green Bulls, they're, they're all around here. Um, as you move on, there's some nice viewpoints along this section of the road here. Um, you can scan the opposite side of the valley, um, scan through the dead trees, check out the Cape Parrots. There's a, a forest at Kuestan, which is excellent, um, really good. There's black rounded bush like there as well. Um, orange ground thrust is quite reliable there, Cape parrots there. Um, and then, yeah, we sort of drive on with this road. There's some woodbush huts here again. Disturbed vegetation, great for some of the, the seed eaters. Um, forest canaries, for example, redback mannequin, green twin spot, they're all around the woodbush huts. And then we turn right off the Hogbos Dorp Road, um, which is a sign that says 4x4 only. You don't need a 4x4. So what I recommend is, I always say, there's, there's really no point in driving all the way down Woodbush. All of the species are, are quite easy to find in the first section. Um, you just drive down and you'll see there's a, there's a nice area where you can park, get out of your car, and then bird from there. That's, that's definitely the best approach. Um, and also, be, be, be aware, if you are to drive down to the bottom, there's a, a gate at the bottom that is closed occasionally, which means you could drive away to the bottom and then have to turn back. So it's really not necessary. Um, all the birds are quite easy to target up here. Um, in particular, black funded bush rock is actually quite easy from, from the parking area. So, um, yeah, that's um, a little bit of advice for, for birding woodbush. And that brings us on to our next section. Um, as I mentioned right at the beginning, this is my favorite area to bird. The low fault, some really fantastic species on offer here. Um, and yeah, I, I, could, I could bird this area all day, every day. Um, just the, the sheer caliber of birding and the, the number of great specials on offer here. So I've selected three sites again, uh, Ledzi Road, which is 
I think also very poorly known um, outside the, the local circles and for for no apparent reason because it is it is absolutely fantastic. There's really great species on offer along Ledzi. I've then taken Letiteli, which is um, if I had to choose my favorite of the favorites, it would be Letiteli. And then lastly, we've included New Agatha, which is um, I think most of you would know it's it's famous for for Batok in particular. So just the Zanin and Ledzi area, area, this is what the habitat looks like. This is on, on the low water bridge at Ledzi. It's a subtropical vegetation. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy to access. So it's, it's 12 minutes drive from Zanin. And this is the, the Ledzi road that sort of runs down here. Um, we'll go more in depth into the sites to bird there. But some of the species on offer here, magpie mannequin, blue spotted wood dove, African cuckoo hawk, pale flycatcher. I mean, these are really mouth-watering species, fin fruit, half color kingfisher. Um, it, is, it is really fantastic. And as I said, these are all birds that are quite regularly targetable, either along the Ledzi Road or in some of these sort of small holdings just outside Zanin. Uh, the habitat is there's river and forest, there's some farmland, and then most of it is this subtropical thicket. So some of the species in, um, on offer here, uh, there's one of the, the real standout gems here, magpie mannequin. Um, yeah, so this is this is a bird that you would you would try and find a bird feeder for ideally. They're actually in Zanin, in the suburbs in Zanin. Find a bird fair finder, find a, a bird finder, a bird feeder. And normally magpie mannequins will be there, uh, along with bronze mannequins as well. Um, it's actually quite possible to see all three species of mannequins here within the morning. And of course, magpie being being the real standout species. We spawned wood dove, another excellent bird, um, a very tough species in the area. Um, they require a considerable amount of grafting to, 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 to get views of and to actually track down. Um, beware, of course, there's emerald spotted and tambourine doves, which can sound quite similar. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously this, this yellow tip to the bowl, for those of you who didn't know, sort of seals the deal. Um, it, it can be quite tough to pick up the blue spots, as you can see on this photo, um, when, when when there's excessive shadows. Um, but yeah, please put wood doves, they, they, they're in any of the subtropical thickets there, um, specifically a lot around the, the, the small holdings in the area. So if there's a small holding with a bird feeder and you've got some thicket next to it, you must know you're in, you're in a good spot to find blue spotted wood dove. Cuckoo hawk is another excellent bird. Um, obviously quite a tough bird to target, uh, but one that we see quite regularly along this part of the road. So it, it, it is a bird that we can go out and actually target. Um, along the Ledzi Road, I've seen this bird multiple times and it's it's really a fantastic bird. So keep your eyes open for African cuckoo hawk whenever you're in this area. And then of course, one of the, another one of the excellent birds, um, African finfoot. So this is um, a bird that we see most often at the, the low water bridge around uh, around Ledzi. Otherwise, the Cliff Cliff Dam is a good, is a good spot to, to try for the species. Um, Again, a lot of patience is required for this bird. It's not per se a difficult species, but you do need to commit a reasonable amount of time um, to actually get really good views of them. So I would recommend getting on site very early and just being prepared to wait um, for this bird to come past. Uh, they're actually surprisingly secretive as well. Um, you, you, you can wait quite a while and then have the bird appear right next to you and you sort of wonder how you, how you missed it. Um, so they, they, they do require work, but it's, it's definitely worth it when you get really good views of, of African film, of African film. This obviously being um, a male here. Half-colored kingfisher is another bird that is quite a feature along the Lataba River. Um, again, they, they, they do sort of patrol their, their section of the river. So it, it can require a bit of patience, um, but eventually they, they do normally come flying past. And if you're lucky, they'll, the land like this, um, right in the sun in front of you, and you can get really excellent views of them. Mountain wagtail, another one of those birds. Um, also, similar to Africa Kingfisher, they do patrol their section of, of the river. And yeah, you I mean, as you can see, you can get really good views of them. They're quite approachable species as well. Collared sunbird, uh, a common inhabitant of any of the thickets around Zanin. Uh, Krogan sticula, another, another very regular species. And then we have Global Roller here, uh, which is one of the the regular um, intra-African migrants, um, a species that we see very often around Zanin in the summer months. Um, it's actually not even necessary to turn off the, the main R71. Um, these birds sit on the power lines 
um, pretty much as soon as you leave from Zinin all the way into Letiteli. And I mean, what, what a stunning species it is. So to give us a, a quick overview of the Zinin and Letiteli sites, so, sorry, the, the Ledzi and Zinin sites, um, Let, Letiteli is coming up next. Um, this is the, the Ledzi road, this, 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 this red highlighted area running down here. Um, there's some areas of thicket here at, at the top where you'll you'll want to check out for things such as collared sunbirds, pale flycatcher. Um, I suspect it would be a good area to travel boost what it would have, or we although we do tend to pick them up more often um, in the in the in the in the small holding areas. Also, if if these farms have been have been left to to go fallow and there's some grass there, it's also excellent to pick up um, croaking, croaking cisticulars in those areas. Grey rump swallow is another species that we see uh, more so in, in the winter months, but they're always along this road. And then we've got the low water bridge, which is sort of the main attraction here, um, where you pick up finfoot, mountain wagtail, half colored kingfisher, all those, those excellent um, species. And yeah, here's just a little photo to show you what the, the Ledzi road looks like. Right, Batok. Now this is obviously um, another one of the, the standout species of, of the Limpopo province as a whole. And um, yeah, Agatha is the best spot for these birds in the area. Um, they, they, they can be quite tough sometimes. So they, they, they tend to be reliable for a couple of months and then they can become a bit difficult over the next few months. But as a general rule, Agatha is a very good spot for Batok. Um, it's quite easy to locate as well. Just type into your phone on Google Maps, a uh, new Agatha plantation. Uh, you can see here it's 18 minutes drive south of Zanin. And you'll see there's this row of massive eucalypt trees. And yeah, basically you just have to sort of painstakingly work your way through these trees. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully you'll be rewarded with excellent views of this, of this very special species. I mean, just look at those eyes. It is, it is a fantastic bird. Right, the, the final site, we have come to Let's Italia and the surrounds. So this is my, my personal favorite area to bird. Um, there's a number of really, really excellent species here. Um, unfortunately, I, and I do need to mention it, a lot of these sites here are not publicly accessible. So you would need to organize a guide to get access to these areas. But I thought I'd just give you a bit of a taste uh, of some of the birds on offer here. So it's located about 27 minutes, about half an hour east of Zanin. Um, obviously a very safe area. Uh, you can aim for easily 120 plus species. And I mean, look at some of the specials on offer here. Cape, um, African skimmer, honors chat, white basic cuckoo shrikes. Um, again, green sandpiper, hooded vulture, gray-headed kingfisher. Um, all those fishing owls are along the, on the, on the, along the Latoba River in this area. So it's this incredible host of really special species. It's sort of the best species in Kruger all in one small area. So, I mean, here's, here's one of the very regular ones, green cap Marmola, a species that is practically guaranteed on any visit to, to Letiteli. Um, they're often very showy birds. They're actually quite inquisitive as well. They, they come out and, and check you out. And yeah, you can get really good views of green cap Marmola here. Great pendulant tit, another very regular species here. Um, often located in, in the, the, the small bird parties. Uh, White-breasted cuckoo shrike, really a standout species of the area and such an exquisite bird. You've got these stunning snow white underparts and then this beautiful dark slate gray upper parts and head. Um, White-breasted cuckoo shrike, a species that we actually picking up relatively reliably around Let's Tell You Now, and a very good bird for South Africa, a very difficult bird to see anywhere in the country. And yeah, I would say Let's Tell You would probably be the most reliable site in the country for the species. African skimmer, I mean, as I mentioned right at the beginning of this presentation, this is a bird that 10 years ago in South Africa was unheard of. I mean, you'd have to go to Chobi or the Okavango to see this bird. And it's a species that we pick up now regularly every winter in, in quite considerable numbers. Um, I mean, there's times where you can have 15, 16 individuals of these birds at one dam um, in the low fold. So um, yeah. Skimmers, really great birds. Um, and I mean, yeah, they are, they, they are just fantastic. African barred islet um, and another very regular species around its daily, along with gray headed kingfisher, obviously um, more, of a, more of a summer visitor, but um, a species that we, we, we do find regularly in the summer months. And then on those chats, one of my, my all-time favorite birds. Um, these birds are very showy. Um, 
they're sort of strangely habituated as well. I mean, this is a very wild area, let's tell you, but these birds are so approachable. Um, and they also, they're very inquisitive. Um, I've had times, actually, sometime last year, we, we were looking at African cuckoo, and we had Arno's chats fly in um, to come and, come and investigate the car. So um, really fantastic birds, such characters. And um, as you can see here, you can get really, I mean, up close and personal with these, with these fantastic species. Uh, it does also feel like you're in Kruger to a certain extent. Uh, species such as Bartley and the larger summer migrant raptors, just lesser spotted eagle are around there. Um, Rhett's Hamachike, another one of my favorite species. Um, these are obviously very common in, in the bird parties there. Uh, Bennett's woodpecker. So all four of the low felt wood, wood, woodpecker species are, are very easy there. Bennett's golden-tailed, bearded, and cardinal. And folks, that brings me to the end of my presentation. So... Thank you very much for, for, for joining me. I, I do hope I inspired you and gave you some, some tips. And um, yeah, I, I, would, I would love to hear from you. Um, if you are ever in the area, please do let me know. If you'd like to contact me, my email address is here. Um, so yes, thank you. Thank you, th thank you very much. I'll be happy to take any questions. And um, yeah. I think everyone just needs to be reminded that that boy is 19 years old. That's one of the best presentations I think we've ever had on Conservation Conversations. I think, um, Daniel, I know you are listening. I think there would be a standing ovation around the country for you there. It's an incredible area and you've done incredibly well to highlight the diversity, um, all the different sites, um, all the incredible specials that can be found. I think there's a mouth-watering list of birds that you've put forward for us there. Um, you're going to have many, many people inquiring for more information. And I'm sure this webinar is going to be used by many, many people going forward, planning trips to Limpopo. Um, there was a question in the chat box, which I'm just going to cover now quickly is, um, are there any local guides in the area? And the answer to that is yes. And um, there are two BirdLife South Africa trained community bird guides, David Letzalo and Paul and Kumani, and you can find their details on our website. And as uh, Daniel, I think, hinted in the beginning, he has started guiding for Birding Africa now that he's moved down to the Cape. And he can do custom tours in uh, Limpopo province, including all the different sites that he's mentioned tonight and some more. Um, so if you are interested, uh, you can possibly find Daniel on one of his holidays or his breaks, and he can take you out um, across Limpopo as well. So plenty of options there across all those sites. Daniel, I think you're with us. Um, if you are, can you just uh, unmute yourself and, and uh, make sure we can hear you? Uh, hi, Andrew. Uh, yeah, I, I'm here. Fantastic, Daniel. Again, just thank you so much. Um, I think everyone enjoyed that incredibly. Uh, it was a great addition to our, our series on birding in um, South Africa's uh, cities and, and urban centers. And um, yeah, I just can't wait to see where, where you go with your birding career and um, what you're going to do with your your science degree and uh, yeah, where are you going to go? Because um, that was really, really impressive. Well done and thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. And yeah, thanks to everyone in the, in the chat now, um, all everyone's kind words and, <laughs> and compliments. I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And again, I'm, I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. All right, Daniel, if you, okay, we're going to just move on to some questions and answers. Um, we, are going to start um, with Jim Rankin. He, he just wanted to know um, why you left out Lechalemetsi. Uh, yeah, so I left out Lechalemetsi purely because um, a number of the species there are, are probably more accessible from um, the Volkberg site that I mentioned. Um, so it's, it, it, I mean, Lechalemetsi is great, but the species are going to be quite similar to the species that you could see in that area. And it's just a bit further out, out of the way. So Lechalemetsi is a, a reasonable drive from Zanin. Um, so yeah, I just, in, in terms of access, I, I, I decided to include that area of the Wartburg rather than Lechalemetsi. Um, I mean, having said that, wing snapping cysticula, for example, is a bird that in the Nipopo province is, is really only found up there uh, in, in, in Lechalemetsi. But yeah, as, as a whole, I would say, in terms of accessibility and the species on offer, um, the, the areas of the Wartburg Mountain closer to Heinitzburg are probably more um, of, of greater interest to, to visiting birders. Excellent, thanks so much. Um, I know there's, when you, when you and I were chatting about how structures talk, you, you were saying there's so many sites, how do, I, how do I choose between all of these different ones? So I think sticking to your, 
your three per those three regions must have been quite a difficult selection process. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to um, uh, Marie's question. Um, she says she's been frustrated for 20 years with, uh, <laughs> with short Claude Larks and, and she wants to know, um, you know, what, what is the best way about going, going to get them? I know you mentioned there are a few sites, but um, perhaps just elaborate on the call and the habitat and what to look out for when, when looking for that species. Cool. Um, yeah, Marie, I would say your, your best bet would be somewhere outside the Polokwane Game Reserve. As I mentioned, they've become a bit more difficult there. So Chibeng or um, Marco Tupong, like I mentioned in the presentation, those are probably going to be the best sites. Um, Marco Tupong is probably the easiest. Uh, they're actually in the, in the villages there. The birds are very tame, so you can get really close to them. And um, yeah, as I said, the key would be to familiarize yourself with the call, but it's to a certain extent, it's not really necessary there. Um, those birds are sitting on 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 the fence posts um, in the village. So they 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 they're, they're very difficult to miss there. Um, and I, I think time of the year does play an important role. Um, it's, your, your best bet would be in summer when the birds are calling. Uh, they they do become slightly more challenging in, in the winter months, but I would say. Yeah, as I mentioned, Makutupong or Chibeng, um, right time of the year in the summer months, I would say that would be, that would be what well, you would put yourself in in a very good position to 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 actually connect with Shortcode Lark. Then, excellent, thanks for that, Daniel. I know a lot of people will be looking for that bird when they visit your your neck of the woods. Um, just before we move on to the extra questions, for before people move on, if you did miss part of this presentation, I know we had a few people, including uh, Chris Lotz saying in the chat room that they, they're only being able to tune in for the last little bit. If you did miss um, the bulk of Dan's talk, um, it will be up on YouTube sometime tomorrow in the afternoon, probably. So um, don't, don't despair. You will be able to watch it back. Um, and as I said at the intro to this, there are over 90 episodes now for you to go back and enjoy. So if you've missed any of our talks, you can go and enjoy them on our YouTube channel. Um, there's a question here from Alison, Dan, um, just asking you to elaborate a bit more about the migrant species in Hannitsburg and Volkberg. Um, yeah, so um, in terms of the, sorry, um, I, I didn't quite catch that. You mean in terms of um, cheap people in particular or migrants in general up there? More, more asking what sort of general migrant species can you encounter in those areas? Okay, no, no excellent. Um, yeah, it's actually, it's actually a, a really great area for, for your migrant warblers as well. Um, those, I, I do think there's potential to find some really good birds um, in, those, in those valleys there. Uh, we pick up large numbers of, of warblers there, common white throat in particular, I've seen a few times down there. Uh, I've heard garden warblers calling there. Loads of... Um, Paleoarctic migrants, uh, spotted flycatchers, and and those kind of species down there. So, I think there's definitely potential for for really exciting migrants down there. Um, lots of willow warblers. So there's always the potential to to pick up something rare in the mix. Um, but yeah, I would I would definitely say it's it, it is a great area for migrants. And I mean, evidently, tree pepper, which is also a paleoarctic migrant, has taken quite a a liking to that particular area. So. Yeah, I would say in terms of in terms of migrants in general, it is a it is an excellent area. Excellent. All right. Um, one of your uh, Birding Africa colleagues, Joel Raju, he's also I'll mention just to the audience, one of the country's top up and coming birders, has picked up a question from the chat. Thanks for transferring it to the Q and A box, Joel. Um, someone asked uh, Dan whether the tree tree puppet site is a four by four or not. Uh, Andrew, no. So you you can access certain parts of that road without a four by four. Um, and in fact, the the one that I showed, that specific route that I showed um, in the presentation, that that you can definitely make quite easily without a four by four. Um, I would recommend a slightly higher clearance vehicle. A sedan might struggle in in certain areas, but um, anything with a a bit of clearance would get you up there. If you really want to go exploring in the Volkberg, though, I, I would recommend a four by four. Um, the, the the further you go in there, the the roads do progressively get worse. Um, but yeah, all of the sites I've shown, um, they, they're all accessible in a normal um, job. Just any, any two-wheel drive car with a bit of clearance will get you there, no problem. Great. Okay. And then unless there's any last minute questions that come in, there's, there's one here from Anthony. And I don't know if you know the answer to the stand, but he's asked, uh, 
are the community bird guides, Paul and David, able to get access to the Let's Tele spots, or is that something that you've negotiated along with Jody and a few others? Uh, Andrew, I'm uh, I'm not too sure. Um, I do think David Letalo does go there, um, so I I would I would have to confirm with him. But I, I think there is a, there is a strong possibility that the community guides will be able to to get you into some of those sites in Let's Tell You. Okay, I think Anthony, um, I've posted the contact details in the answer to that question, um, and the best thing would be to just uh, call them up and ask them and see what they can do for you. Um, and then I see there is a um, another question here from Gordon Holtman. Gordon would like to know, is it worth a, a visit to the area in winter or is it predominantly a summer birding destination? Um, well, yeah, it, it, it would depend on, on the target species that you're looking for. Obviously, your, your, your migrant warblers and things are all going to be summer species. But a lot of the, the real special birds are, are resident and, and you can see them all year round. For example, black-funded bush like is going to be a resident species, short cord lark, bat hawk, um, most of your, your low fault species, those are all resident all year round. So no, I would say definitely. Um, it's, it's definitely an area that can be visited in, in the winter months. Um, it's actually quite pleasant to, to bird, especially in, in the low felt in the winter months. Um, I'm sure as, as everyone's is quite familiar, it does get really hot in the low felt in, in the summer. So your, your birding then is most restricted to the, to the morning, whereas in, in the winter months, you can easily bird the whole day in those areas. So no, I would say it's, it, is, it is definitely worth a visit any time of the year. Okay, so I think that's uh, wrapped up all the questions that I have on my side. I haven't seen any others coming through unless I've missed them in the chat and I apologize if I did miss them. Um, I neglected to mention that all the photographs in this presentation were also um, Daniel's photographs. So not only did he uh, give us a fantastic uh, delivery of the presentation, but all the content was his as well. Um, like I said, I think he's one of the, the country's uh, up and coming birders, uh, an exceptional birder in his own right, even if he comes from um, arguably very good stock um, <laughs> from Prof. Neil Brecht. And uh, who knows, Dan, perhaps if you follow in your dad's footsteps, you'll also be a prof one day. Um, I could definitely see you getting there with your, your incredible passion and knowledge about birds, and particularly in um, this area around Polakwane to Letitele, which I know is, is very, very close to your heart. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, your passion, and um, your time with us tonight. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, there's quite a lot of messages in the chat box for you to catch up on. Um, I will also send you a copy of that in our uh, webinar wrap-up, wrap but um, I'm going to leave the webinar room open just for a couple of minutes for people to pop those last messages in there. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Next week, we have uh, Andrea Angel from the Albatross Task Force. And I've seen a snippet of this talk, um, and it's also an excellent one, an update on, on the very, very important work they're doing, conserving albatrosses, not only in Southern African waters, but also on the high seas through some industry leading work. So please do join us next week for that. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you have a very safe evening. Um, it's getting very, very cold here in Buckerstrom where I am. So I'm going to go grab a, a blanket and a hot water bottle and maybe something warm to drink. Um, I wish you all a, a happy evening further and uh, very little to no load shedding if you can avoid it. Thanks everyone, good night.